Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Rogue Life, a game where I adjust my chair, a live stream where I play games, games like Sunless Sea. Uh, today, uh, we are going to be playing our second adventure inside of Sunless Sea. Uh, the same general rules apply as before. I will be reading any sort of new text that we come across. Uh, I will be summarizing, uh, poor, poor Captain Eliza has died. Um, so we are going to visit some of the same islands again uh, that we visited before, uh, and so I'm going to summarize the stories rather than spending like 10 or 15 minutes saying the same lines that I said last uh, last week. Uh, hopefully this will continue for quite some time, and uh, I've had I've had sailors survive a good for five hours, so uh, we will be playing an hour today, and hopefully Penny will be alive at the end of it. Insane, and not mutinied to death by her crew. Uh, let's get this started, shall we? Beautiful, beautiful goddamn music. Uh, today's, uh, game is preceded by me drinking tea, which had a comical and almost, uh, sort of horrifying experience regarding it. Uh, since, uh, my gain is really high on my audio. Let's see, does that, is that better? Can I go a little bit louder now? Can I go louder now? Okay, that's better. I think. Eyeballing things. Okay, so uh, to remind everyone where we left off, the only thing we've really done inside of London is we got the orders to go exploring, and importantly, where's my, where's my damn ship? Uh, we are carrying a tomb colonist. Now, we found Vendor Blight last week, uh, and we're hopefully going to be uh, getting there and not getting murdered on the way uh, today. We have recent news, so we'll be able to talk to the sisters. Um, I still have my chart because uh, uh, I was kind enough, or Eliza was kind enough to send uh, the chart to uh, Penny before she died. I guess probably before her uh, mutinous crew grabbed her and flung her out the window, she penned that real quick, and the crew was afraid to uh, not send it on, I guess. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense that I have access to it. Ooh, Mutton Island. Mutton Island? Am I going to go drop by Mutton Island? No, I've got to go to Vendor Blight. I'll go to Vendor Blight, then I'll go drop off at Mutton Island. And we'll perform some muddlergy. That's when you turn uh, sheep into metal or ore. It's a Settlers of Catan thing. Uh, and since there is no Settlers of Catan roguelike, we're just never going to find out about that in the stream canon. Uh, if anybody would like to make a Settlers of Catan roguelike or discuss it, we can start talking about that in the chat. Ah. Uh. Peacefully sailing the Z. Alright, Hunter's Keep. Uh, I'm going to reconnoiter the art island because, my god, of course I am. Uh, what am I good at? I'm good at hearts. 77% chance that I can spy on the house? Sure! Okay, yeah, terrible things are about to happen at the house. Uh, I'm going to present myself at the home. They're very kind. They're super happy. They all have different characterizations. Last time we talked to Cynthia the whole time. This time we're going to talk to Lucy. <clears throat> Lucy, the middle sister, is sunny, restless, prone to giggles. Lucy leans over and whispers to you confidently, a complex story about a butler, a pig, and an inheritance. You don't follow all the details of the plot, but somehow the pig ends up in the attic and the butler in the vicar's bed. Candles flicker, dishes enter and leave, and the wind butts gently at the window panes. By the time the plum pudding arrives, you're cheerful as you've been in months. I've lost hunger. I wasn't very hungry. I have stones. Attention. Uh, I have supplies, uh, and I'm acquainted with the Sisters of Hunter's Keep. Now, uh, I'm going to tell them news news. Uh, they're very cheerful about this. And now we're going to talk to Phoebe, because Phoebe is a soft voice, watchful, and unpredictable. Phoebe has a story to tell of two lovers parted by water, of a raven that carried messages, of a fragment of the moon. She beats time on the table as she speaks, as if to a song only she can hear. The effect is hypnotic. 
Your attention drifts, but through the skylight of the dining room to the false stars glittering in the roof of the cavern, you drift like a puffball spore. The entrance shimmers below. Islands lie like mineral blah, blah, blah. islands lie like mineral specimens on black velvet. Ships bob like wood chips beneath the islands. Vast spined things pulse in the depths. There's a scent like the scent before a storm. The storm came, Phoebe qu says Phoebe quietly. Everything changed. Somewhere in there, you finish the last course. The scowling maid reluctantly serves cheese and bath all over biscuits. I've gained supplies. Hooray! I've got Storm's attention. Surprise! I have a memory of a distant shore. I can trade those for things. Uh, do you have any shops? Uh, my officer wants to go die someplace because that's the kind of game this is. Let's set off. Now is F lights? No, F is going to be bad. That's going to be something awful, like full power. Yeah, okay. These are the waters. <laughs> Dust echoes, even a sepia tent to the air. These are the waters around the tomb colonies. I could have sworn I just heard whispering in the background. You know, for a game that isn't actually scary at all, it can kind of get to you. Something I find funny is like this art is really simple. Like I love the the tiny particle effects, but just the subtle, the layer of water here at the edge. I don't even think the edge of the water, these rims, is even animated, and yet it just looks so sharp. It's so good. Oh, I should z bat. Um. It's just really gorgeous, uh, and I think everybody should probably take a closer look at it. I mean, I'm uploading these in pretty high def, so you can probably see it, but it's still fucking amazing. Trouble with Tomb Colonists. The Trouble with Tomb Colonists. Really, guys? Really? The new Jonah. Your passenger stands somberly by the rail. Salt sent me a dream, she insists. You must find my father. Salt tells me that you'll find my father in the belly of a monstrous eel. Gods never lie. Gods never lie. That seems optimistic. But if she's right, she'll reward you for her father's return. Open a monstrous eel! Just what precisely is their problem? Okay, great. Wonderful. Oh, God. Uh, I don't have a thing. Tomb Colony of Underblight. I'm going to scout it. Uh, I need to talk to the first curator. Uh, he's going to ask me for a bunch of colors. Uh, listen to the whispered request. Uh, accept the commission. Uh, so now I'm trying to get colors so that this guy can... He can't die, because that's not a thing that happens. But, uh, yeah, that's awful. Let's explore Vendor Blight. An uneventful afternoon, you wander the echoing streets alone. From time to time, the sensation of being watched comes upon you, but each time that you halt, you hear no other's footsteps. Nothing eventful, only eerie. But when you return to the quayside, something, someone has left an odd, bulky box for you. There's no bill of la lading, but the name of your ship is attached to the tag. You've gained a terror. That's fine. It's not a hundred. That's all for now. I have a Soothe and Cooper long box. Uh, on first sight, it looks like a tomb colonist coffin. On closer examination, it carries stenciling reading Soothe and Cooper and a handwritten tag, Deliver, Delivery to Depot A, Station 3. Uh, actually, is that where I've been sent? Ah, now I've been sent to Iron and Misery. Uh, so, alright, let's plot a course. Um, Frostbound is horrible. I'll head east. The sun would rise that way, if this were, you know, hell. I should actually go to hell. It's a place here. Kind of. It's called, like, the Brass Nation. Well, swirling stuff in the darkness. 
that's probably fine, right? Uh, I have seven fuel. I'm not very scared of anything at all, period. I'm certain it's going to be fine. Just fine. Got plenty of food. I see a light in the distance. Everything's going to be fine. Is that fog? Fog is bad, guys. Fog is real bad. Why aren't I using my Z-Bat? What? Oh, shit. Demo Island is to the east. Let's see if I can outrun this Megalops. Is that Demo's Gate? Alright. Okay, good. He left. Luminescent beasts like eyeless dolphins play in your wake. What? What? Why am I in battle again? Okay. I found Demio Island. And Moody's Light. I'm gaining fragments. Pure Wall Point. This looks like a nice place. It's got, um, fungus. Uh... Looks like a, a warehouse. Looks like piers built on, well, other piers. Oh hey, it's the Iron and Misery Funding Station! That's where I'm supposed to go! Oh! Shit! Okay. We're fine. Oh no! Okay, I'm just gonna dock. Uh, everything's gonna be fine. Okay, good, he left. All clear. Fostian leaks. Demo Island. I'm guessing here, guys, I don't speak French. A fervid forest of fungus. Iron and Misery Company Funging Station. I and M has a funger operation here. Felling giant... Oh, really? Felling giant bulgous shrooms for building materials, harvesting Kirali for its medicinal properties. It's a desperate little outpost of something like civilization. Up puffs the affable factor. Oh, hello, Captain. Thank God for visitors. We'd go quite mad out here otherwise. Ah, quite mad. How can we be of assistance? Uh... This is my contact. Give the pass sign to the affable factor. The Admiralty asked you to bring back strategic information. This is your contact. Here, little to report, but we had that carnate privateers nosing around. And tell, and tell them that the company grows suspicious. Mr. Iron knows the Admiralty is interested in his business. Pray, my friend, that we you never have to serve two masters, as I do. Oh, oh God. I'm going to have tea with the factor. Everything will be fine. I'm going to explore the island real quick. Close crowded thickets of Bulgus and Scarily, the Iron and Misery Company fells them daily, but they grow back almost as fast. Wah! Rat Corsairs! Ah, the gully. The ambusher's favorite terrain feature. It looked like such a short and easy way, but now a sudden flood of black and white fur confronts you. A starving torrent of ratus faber corsairs. Their chief addresses you in a piping, unhuman voice. Easy there, me giants! We're in dire need here. Lend us help and we'll pay well for it. No need to fight. But the notice his rat hand is on the hilt of his rat cutlass. Give them what they want. They're only rats, but there are a lot of rats. And they have what looks like a rattling gun. Really? They'll exchange drowning pearls for supplies to repair and restock. Uh, wow. That is expensive. I mean, I guess I could return. I would die if I fight. And I don't have the cat, because it's funny. Ah, uh, fuck. Alright, fine, here you go, you bastards. You're not bad for a door filler, not bad at all. Pleasure doing business. Should you ever find yourself beneath the floorboards of Khan's glory, look me up. Calm seas. Thanks. Thanks for robbing me, you prick. I'm gonna compile a port report. Of course, INM's activities here don't seem that interesting. Nevertheless, record what you can. Uh, gather supplies. Could go either way. Well, I just got robbed, so... I've gained terror and supplies. I'm a fortunist. 
Some of the island's fungus is good to eat. Some is poisonous, hallucinogenic, or mischievous. Good luck! Okay, I'm done now. Uh, do you have shops? I could buy supplies. Anyone? Think I should buy supplies? Neither do I. It'll be fine. I did the job for the Admiralty. I'll just go back to the Admiralty. Um, let's see how my map's looking. I'll go south. Uh, and then I'll go straight to Wolfstack. And I won't eat the crew. Stop telling me to eat the crew. Yeah, there was like one... What? is that? Wah! I'm glad I turned. That, that megalops is a giant megalops. The Bonnie Reefs looks... bad. Like fucking everything is dangerous. Salt lines is to the south. Oh. I fed my crew. I'm down to three supplies and only four fuel. I really wish I could carry more stuff. A baked breeze rises, the improbable scent of stone out of some distant desert. You are close to the salt lions. It's a jellyfish. You've discovered the salt lions. You've discovered Zealport! Man, the music's good. Music's really good. I hope it's not too loud. There is a vast sorrow in their empty eyes. Two basalt beasts. Cathedral sized. They frown eternally at each other across the black waves. The north one carries an encampment. Creeping human figures eat away its features like rot, pick, pick, picking. There's a supply dock below. Compile a port report. Do I not have enough echo? Damn. Muscular pick wielders rest on camp stools, watching you approach, passing hip flasks around. An unctuous overseer beckons you to sit. Fungal tisane and tea cakes. We get funding from the bazaar, it's true, but Station 4? I wouldn't call us Station 4, it's a little grandiose. The stones are stuffed with secrets, but most of them are used as garden, statuary, or occult ballast. Most of them go down to the places under the bazaar. More tea cakes? Oh, there we go. Uh, do you have shops here? No. Alright. Let's get out of here. Oh, do I pass under the letters? Yes, I do. Okay, light is uh, sometimes good. Oh, this will be fine. I'm in no danger at all. I could stop off at the frickin' way station if I want to. Everything's fine. I'm drinking tea. I opened three different empty tea canisters to bring this tea to you today. Hey, Rowena's Rocks. I'm so glad that I've met you. Home waters. Zailers dawdle at the rail, watching the lights of London. You're low on fuel. No, no, no kidding. Yes. I can see that. I've actually uh, coasted into Wolfstack. Why did they decide to tell me about full power of the engines right now? What terrible thing is about to happen? Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing bad ever happens at the Wolfstack docks. A little gift. A very fine evening to your captain. My, what might call 
Mentor is very fond of the adventures of Z-Captains, and would like to offer you what you might call dispensation, on account of he is so fond of Z-Captains. Behind the blind bruiser on the dock stands a dray piled high with fuel and supplies. I'm going to choose to inquire further. Who is this patron? Is there a catch? He runs a very fine and very liberal establishment just across the river. What is much patronized by sailors, by men of wit and vinegar. On public house, and there is no obligation to speak of. My patron would, would hope only that you might remember him kindly. And suppose that if the opportunity should arise for you to return his kindness, then I do not imagine he would refuse your offer. No, that's, that's too nice. I will not deny that I'm a little saddened, and I think that my patron will also share my sadness. But I understand that you know your business, and a sea captain is a free spirit. And I will explain carefully to my patron that you mean no insult by refusing of his kind gift. Zale, sa Zale Zafe. The dray creaks off into the dockside. I refuse the offer. Uh, I've been, uh, I've played this game before. And I've seen where that offer goes. I've never refused it before. So, hmm, it'll be great. It's time for my lodgings. I'm going to read the morning papers. Uh, this is one we've read before. Uh, rest above the blind helmsman. I only have six terror, so that's kind of okay. And I like my money. Uh, I can purchase an elegant townhouse if I had a thousand echo. Uh, back to the rest of the city. Or I could click the card to the right. Uh, visit the Admiralty Survey Office. So you've been to Demos Gate. They gave me stuff. They gave me fuel. Uh, they took my port report. They gave me money. Uh, I trust the sisters are keeping well. They are citizens of her enduring majesty. Notionally. Uh, fuel again, and a pittance. Uh, been to... Fender Blight. I've been to the Salt Lions. Here's the strategic information. What's that? Indeed, indeed. I'll send you directly to speak to the Admiral himself. We're from all over England, apparently. And not consistently. The dark spectacled admiral. You're ushered into his office into his office of Mansion's Pyre, a cramped room with a vast desk. He surveys you across that desk. Ah yes, the merchant captain of whom we hear such complicated things. The Admiral sits on, up, although he steeples his fingers and pretends calm. He's hard to read with those glasses, but he reads the summary intently. Satisfactory, he says at last. Eminently satisfactory, actually. Good work. Take this for your trouble. The clerk will see you paid. I don't have strategic information anymore. I do not have vital intelligence. Uh, I've already done all my port reports. Uh, oh, oh, damn it. I didn't mean to... Fuck. Oh, well. Uh, I would like to visit the fuel stores. And I don't need repairs, so... Success! I've lost a favor and gained three fuel. All right, uh, let's go back to the offices. Uh, I could visit the university. I have one secret. How am I doing a crew? I've got eight. Um, I don't have any, I don't have a new recruit, really? visit the university. Okay, I'm going to the university. 
The university has an inexhaustible appetite for secrets, Z-specimens, and other tidbits of esoteric lore. Provide a secret to prove yourself worthy of entry. I get into pages. Hey. Oh, yes, the university's maritime liaison whispers breathily. Oh, yes, this is quite a tasty one. Let me explain to you. He, she, he explains, teeth glinting. The Alarming Scholar. The Alarming Scholar is mercurial, to say the least, a creature of sudden moods and provoking teeth. Possibly her, is it her? Appointment is university maritime liaison with, was precautionary. To keep his, is it his? Razor sharp enthusiasm from causing too many injuries in the faculty. Ah, yes, the scholar whispers breathily. I have a budget for acquisitions. What have you brought me? Uh, a piquant piece of Piscaresque pilgrimage, a memory of distant shores. Here you go. As the alarming scholar listens, tears well in the depths of those shining, or is it blazing, eyes, they overflow, spash, splashing onto the desk blotter. Stop. He, she, sobs at last. This is too, too beautiful. Allow me to bring the macaw of memories. I wish each individual tone recalled. I've gained echoes. Uh, the antiquarian likes me more. I have no other things. Okay. Bye. You have business to attend to, and besides, the scholar keeps snapping his, her, teeth like a mechanical trap. Ah. Ah, I don't have another free evening. Damn. Uh, I'm going to go to my lodgings. Uh... I think that's it. Uh, let's see. I still have a, a significant shortage of supplies. So I'm going to go to the shipside provisioners. Uh, I'm going to pick up some supplies. Ten supplies. I'll buy one fuel. Uh, I'll call that a day because I believe my hold is, uh, is half full. This still needs to get to Depot Station 3. So, I guess I could go east and then turn south because I don't, definitely don't want to go near Frostfound. Let's see how we do. Ah. Uh. How much did it cost to do the salt lines? I should be able to do the salt lines on the way back, unless I, I come back broke, which would be bad. It's always bad when you come back with less money than you started. This is the most interesting part of the podcast. Also, it's not a podcast. It's a video live stream thing. On YouTube Gaming. I should start plugging products and speaking in Swedish because Jag taler bara in svenska. Because a lifetime ago, I lived in Sweden. A sailor is praying. Something awaits me in port. I'm just gonna avoid that mist. Let's see if the Z bat will find anything. Mutton Island is to the west. I should go check that out. Maybe I'll check it out on the way back. So secretly, like, imagine that this is a very small Wind Waker map. So, uh, the world is actually cut up into squares. And, uh, somewhere in each square is, is an island, normally. Uh, sometimes they're far worse than islands. Shepherd's Wash, the salty hinterland of welcome of London, home to hermits, nuns, and shadowy business. Well, Buck, looks like it's gonna have to be the hard way.
Okay, my hull seems to be doing fine. You've destroyed the pirate, uh, pirate steam pin pinnace. I thought it was pinnacle. Panache? Who knows? The ship is yours. What do you do to her? She's a vile old vessel, and these Zs aren't safe. Take what you can and move on. I now have a cache of curiosities. Some sort of barrel. Tap the bung. Carefully. It's a cask of wine! Uh, in the flaring light, it's Z-dark, but the taste is the darkness of autumn. Mushroom wine. An acquired taste, perhaps, but once you've acquired, acquired it, who'd go back to grapes? Nasty little bubbles of goo. Grapes. Fucking love this game. Also, hey look, it's the Fall in London logo. Alright. Uh, it's all clear. I, I murdered those people. They're dead now. Uh. This looks like a place. Oh, hey, it's the Shepherd Isles. That sounds nice. Always be careful if it sounds like a nice place. Because that's the place that gets ya. Thornwell Croft. Field Haven. Mm, this looks too picture picturesque and nice. The music's too pleasant. We're gonna get murdered. Shepherd Isles. Sheep. Lichen. Standing stone. So basically it's... Frickin' Scotland. Uh, have I succeeded in getting into the chat? Slash poke? Says Brianna Dempsey. Relation? Course, the bearded watchman tells you. There are no actual shepherds on the Shepherd Isles. Sheep are mostly illegal here. No, indeed, it's just the name of the gentleman that found the island. Greybeard, sitting in the village square, square, nods solemnly. No sheep, one says with the same exact voice, but plenty of tails. Ask us anything. Picnic at the Standing Stones. Bearded villagers will sell you mutton stew and kefir and stone bottles of cold, fresh spring water and row you over the stones. I don't know what that means. Uh, Tales of the Standing Stones, Tales of Three Graves, of Thornwell Croft, the rest of the Z, the rest of the Z, the bearded watchman. Here's where you, what am I missing for this? I need one more cask of mushroom wine. Well, I'm going to compile my court report report. Ah, oh, yes, yes, my yes, there's been goings on in the bleak light of the false stars. Surface rolling like a porridge pot, up with a roar of steam and a flash of fire. Three windows swimming tentacles. Then we saw His Highness. There is rather a lot of this material. Oh. Oh, I can hire a navigator. Are you a freaking... No, you're an engineer. That's great. Uh, 50 Echoes. I don't know this guy. Oh, I'm gonna hire a navigator. Engage an officer. The sigil-ridden navigator. I... Let me guide your ship. I know all the Z. How it is. How it will be. Please, the headaches only stop when I'm working. Relief. Thank you. The nonsense here was a distraction for a while, but only the Z can help me now. I, my god, the air, and the air, it's clear already. Let me chart a course for you. Yes, my head, my head. Um, excuse me, while I go to officers and just drag you. You're my first officer? Mmm, I didn't think that through very well. Fine, sure, whatever, sure, whatever, sure. Shepherd Isles. Fine, I'm gonna picnic at the Standing Stones. I got five echoes. Everything's fine. A peaceful afternoon. Your sailors watch the fireflies shimmer, swap shanties, pass around the grog and shy stones at the more vampirically inclined Z-bats. Grasses nod in the breeze. Across the dark water, the lights of Abbey Rock gr glow watchfully. That's all for now. It's fine. Oh, that's all I can do here. Do you have shops? You do, but I'm actually pretty well provisioned. Uh, what's wrong with the, the sigil-ridden navigator? Let's find out. Let's speak to him. How's it going? I, yes, uh, yes, uh, now is good. Uh, thank you. Invite him to dine with you. I can increase my mirrors. Is that this one? No, this fails. Mirrors is, is knowing things. I should. I need to boost my hearts. Um, 
I'm going to burn a supply to talk to him. Invite him to dine with you. He has an admirable appetite for so slight a fellow. Seconds, then thirds, disappear in small, hasty morsels. He is nervous and not a gifted conversationalist. You do your best to plug the silence. When you ask about his past, he winces. Can't say, my lady. This, he taps the livid sigil on his temple, which twitches like a scorpion sting, has burned away my memories. I recall I have a brother, but not his name or where he is. I remember the names of the ships I've served on. The Implicit, the Bonnie Swan, but not their crew. How did he come by the sigil? He clutches his head. I don't know, I don't know. Thinking about it is like fire in my skull. He grits his teeth. Someone must have hated me very much to curse me with it, but I can't even remember my enemy. So there you go. Uh, I could increase my mirrors. Oh. I can talk to him again. My sleep is riddled with dreams, my lady. Dreams of bells and candles. A destination. He paces the deck. I see a lonely house lit by Talon Wick. A bell is ringing. It rings now. Do you hear it? He scratches at the sigil, which has begun to bleed. Do you know the place, Captain? Can I plot a course? A place of candles and bells. The Chapel of Lights. A northern church where no sin is too terrible. God, I fucking love this game. Alright. Um, I probably can't. Wow, I... I should go back. I should go back. I'll go west. I'll go up the coast. Uh, I lied. I'll go to this other island, Abbey Rock. It'll be fine. The Sisterhood is there. It'll be fine. It will be fine. They can't possibly just be a bunch of murder nuns. Murder nuns? In the underworld? Nah. Nah, it'll be fine. Here, the Grim Sisters' lair. A black spit of an island, far from anywhere anyone would want to go, and that's how the Sisterhood likes it. Here stands their fortress covent convent. There are bear traps which look friendlier than this. Uh... I can pay for supplies, but it's expensive. I'm gonna get a court- uh, a report. Nothing happens. The sisters watch us. We feel their eyes. The sea crashes on the rocks, withdraws. The fortress stands stolid as the last year of a century. The greatest peril you risk here is a certain purpleness of prose. Knock at the iron-studded gates with news! The muscular prioress, the abbess's lieutenant, comes to the door to listen. She nods and makes notes. She pays particular attention to the news of a marsh beast predations and the traffic of the, of the rooftops. In return, she offers a rather precautionary blessing, but the blessing reassures your crew. I'm not going to knock at the gate without news, because I think they'll probably kill me. Uh, I need to come back with a hunting trophy. Uh, that's a whole thing. I think, I, I think I've done that one ages ago. Let's send out a Z-Bat. Station 3. Where is that? I'm trying to get to Station 3. This is like the most densely populated island shenanigans ever. I hope Wolf's Rift doesn't earn its name. Today. Everything's fine. Nothing bad could possibly happen here. Nope. Depot A of Station 3. That's where I'm supposed to go. To do something. Is that where I'm dropping off the... Station 3. Machinery hums behind high steel walls. Up the hill there are visible outlines of warehouses and a building with a spire. But the lamps are low and they burn at where they burn it all, and your ship is the only one in harbor. Train your telescope on shore. Might be best to get a look from a distance. 
church or something else? You stand on the high point of your ship and look out to shore. There's a steepled building in the horizon, by far the largest thing in sight. No cross marks the top of it, nor any other symbol you recognize. Sea wolves are not going to eat my crew. I protect my crew unless they eat me. Uh, deliver a long box. The only way past the walls is an unimposing but sturdy looking triple locked gate. Silvery metal. Hmm. A sign beside it reads, Deliveries. The gate stands open. Go for it. Yeah, let's do this. Deliveries. There are no stevedores, however, and no wagons waiting to help you help with the heavy cargo. There is only a sign which reads deliveries and a painted hand which points insolently up the rock cut staircase staircase. Let's do this. Up a twisting staircase. There's a great deal of grumbling from the crew. The stairs are sharp edged and wet. The box is heavy and its contents inclined to shift. After a few slips and a bad bruise to the shin, you resort to placing crew members along the stairs and handing the box along. There is a warehouse at the top of the stairs, but it is not, apparently, your destination. Another sign points along the narrow path towards the building with the spire. Deliveries, it says, more aggressively this time. Someone in the spired building is singing. The song sets your teeth on edge. Maybe I should just, like, full night veil this up at the top of the stairs. You have a long, heavy box, a winding path ahead that runs perhaps a quarter mile through the mist, a crew that is beginning to mutter about having to do landlubber work. There's a warehouse just to your right, but the sign says deliveries are to be taken onward. Rather, it says, emphat says it rather emphatically, as a matter of fact. Send ahead to the building for extra hands. Meh. Break into the warehouse and leave the box there. Uh. Carry the box to the building with the spire. Going the extra distance might mean you charge more for your efforts. I will not win that, so I'm going to send ahead for extra hands. If they want the box delivered, they can do it themselves. Telling it as it is, the closer you get, the less the building with the spire looks like a church. The walls are soot blackened and made of brick. There are no windows, only narrow vents up near the roof. From these comes a low and cheerful singing. At last you are close enough to bang on the door. An austere acolyte answers. She is dressed in black from head to foot. Her gloves are thick leather and her goggles are double glass. She continues singing right up to the moment when she acknowledges you. Leave the boxes. She stops, pushing the goggles away from her eyes. She has noticed, perhaps for the first time, that there are no boxes. Deliveries come all the way up here, she says, before singing again. You indicate that your crew is unaccustomed to that sort of work. She looks as exasperated as a person can while continuing to sing about rabbit's feet and edible emeralds. But at last, she says she'll see to it, if you can lead her servants to the correct landing. Not much later, you are standing in the mist watching a parade of clay men. They hoist the boxes on their shoulders and march away, surprisingly quiet, towards the building with the steeple. An austere acolyte leads them, her lamp swinging on a chain. Follow because you haven't been paid. Follow because you're curious. Follow because the singing has got into your bones. The austere acolyte sings all the time when she is not speaking. The words of the song bother and fascinate and compel. Fever dreams. You walk close enough to the acolyte to hear the next verse. It concerns the smell of hot brick, the chime of ashes falling on the grate, and the pleasure of braiding pokers through... braiding pokers together on a winter's night when there is nothing else to do. At least, you think that's what it means. When you go back over the words in your head, you're not sure they make even that much sense. The austere acolyte directs the arrangement of the long box in the room under the steeple. There are many other boxes there already, stacked in rows, three or four of them, as many as you, as many as you have brought. In another corner of the room is a pile of wood from previous boxes, already emptied and dismantled. Singing to herself about a mountain upholstered in velvet, she takes a crowbar to the box. The corpse inside is permanently dead, in a way that the dead of London often are not. Not a drowny, not a tomb colonist, but not coming back either. 
It looks pale and ordinary, except for the slight deten distension of the skin over the breastbone. Gently, the acolyte presses there and nods, singing about tulips embroidered with yellow floss. She lifts the body onto a marble slab. Without pause in her lyrics, she prepares a scalpel. Your presence does not seem to bother her. Watch. You've never heard of this practice before. Don't watch. Watch with medical interest. Whatever she is about to do, it's sure to be anatomically informative. Metal in metal. The austere acolyte extracts, deftly and with very little blood, a heart-sized sphere of silver-gray metal. Despite your keenest observation, you cannot work out how the sphere grew there or what it is for. With a giant nutcracker, she cracks the sphere, another sphere inside that, and another. Finally, in the center, she comes to something heavy, small, and black. She lifts it out with tongs and looks at it through her goggles. The song falters, but she manages to keep humming, though the words are lost. She puts the black and heavy thing into a jar marked with the word, with a word of the correspondence. She closes the jar and seals it with red wax. Finally, when the corpse is removed again and the marble slab wiped clean, she comes to pay you. Thank you, she says. Return another day. I may have something else for you. I have more food favor, I've run out of things, I traded long boxes, and I have a new secret. Great. No shops. I still have officers. Uh, I'm still pretty well supplied, actually. I'm 51 minutes into this. I should not push my luck, but I'll go west. I'll go west. It'll be fine. I go west. Look at me going west. Nice, responsible west. Yup. This is west. Right, crew? The crew is going to murder me. In my sleep. Okay, that's still filled, Haven. Good, good. Everything is fine. Hey, Zbat. Zbat probably shouldn't find anything right now. No islands. Okay, good. Because like I'm in the middle of a of a square. It shouldn't be a thing that can happen. Everything will be fine. Fathom King's Hold. The promised sea, all through this place, the song of the drownies lies shivering along the wind. Okay. Fathom King? Drownies doesn't sound good. Discovered Fathom King's Hold. I love the transition when you find a new island or something that they kind of light up. Uh, and this, this text actually like swept into existence. Which is just a really nice little subtle thing. Lorcan's port, named for the most enterprising of drownies. Phosphor cells burn green somewhere below the king waits. Like an iceberg, like a bizarre master's scheme, like the neath itself, most of the hold is invisible. You see only a tiny portion of sculpted cor coral. The rest waits below the surface, the Fathom King's bone rooms and aquaria, his pearl snares and his dining chambers. I do not have a Z-story. Compile a port report. Those granted audience return dazed, awestruck. The king is not generous, but occasionally he is fair. Perhaps your sailors would like to take air ashore. 
Me. A ruby dream, Captain. I walked the shore at the edge of the coral caps. The drownies sported there. They called my name. They said I could join them if I partook of the feast. Their eyes were red pearls, Captain. I did not sleep. There is such a hunger in me. Nope. Time to go. Mouths to feed. Your crew needs provisions. You can tighten your belts, but bad things are going to happen. This card will remain available as long as hunger is over 50. Don't let hunger reach 100. Feast. This option is only available to those who have already turned cannibal. Uh, perhaps not. Okay. Now it is time to leave. Oh, uh, oh good. Okay. Okay. So they, they've they been fed. Uh, I am really low on fuel. I am desperately low on fuel. I have made poor decisions that are going to get us all killed. I am desperately low on fuel. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done. Oh, what the? That's bad. That's got to be bad. Sizzling vapors rise from the sea. Time slips sideways. A coil of rope has stung a stoker, and his fellows beat it to death. We are under the hand of the Iron Republic. On the horizon, a sickly yellow light glimmers for a moment, then fades. I should have gone to the Iron Republic. It's too late to turn around now, but my fuel is low. The lamps dim around me. I see a port. Giannotti Harbor. I've gained a secret. Speak to my crew to improve my abilities. The Kumean Canal staging area. Here the dark waters run down from the surface from a brighter sea. The canal ascends through locks and gates and shadowed turns to the sunlight of the surface. Travel to the surface. I do not have enough fuel. I would need 22. I do have enough supplies. Uh, unlocked with menaces, yearning, burning, no more than 199. Listen for gossip. Gather a port report. The gates open and shut. The locks remain free from sabotage. If anywhere besides London is safe and all the enter Z, it is here. The surface nations have an interest in keeping the way open. Listen for gossip. Daylight. This would be a prime spot for a pub or wine shop, but the interest of the Echo Bazaar and the laws of London prevent it. They don't like competition. Still, there are temporary half-legal hostelries in the long moored ships. Here you trade stories with sun-tanned surface sailors, stories of Paris and Batavia, the Lost Fires, and the Final Isles. You have a vision of the surface. Shops! Yes, I will buy two fuel um, for twice the cost that it would take me in London, but that should be enough to get me to London. We will escape, and we will go to London, and that is where we will end the stream. But yes, this is where you can climb to the surface if you have the gumption and the money to do it. You fed the crew. I did not feed them each other, which was an option earlier.
need to increase my veils so that I don't get spotted as easily. Murray Straits. I hear laughter from the foredeck. Home waters. Zaylers dawdle at the rails. What an island. I'm going to... What's this? Once this simple fishing village was part of the London suburbs, before London fell and the waters rushed in, smoke spirals from the cottage chimneys, a lonely hill rises beyond town. Drinks at the Cock and Magpie. Pick up a wretched mog. That's really handy for dealing... Nope. Nope. Uh, wander a little way on the shore from the dock. I'll explore the shore. A concert. As you prepare to go ashore, your first officer salutes. Captain! Actually, that's my, that's the sigil-ridden navigator. Captain, four of the crew intend to perform a concert on the seashore. You and I are invited to attend. Attend? It'll be good for morale, and perhaps some of them can actually carry a tune. Ascetic monkey? Okay. Sure. Perform. It's hearts. It's a straightforward challenge. Yes! In happier time, you practice the recorder in the parlor of the rectory. You still have it somewhere. You could join in. A joyful noise. All of you together, there on the doorstep of the deep, making your uncertain way through recent mahogany hall favorites. It's a little bubble of cheery London light, and here in the teeth of night, you catch your cook's eye and grin. Uh, chat with the fisherman. How much is it going to cost me? Right, a, a buck. You sail the Z. You sail the Z around the island. They mend their nets as nets by the harbor. They see all that happens, but you'll need coin to open their mouths. Little ships and little secrets. Pirates plying the waves. Smugglers at their work. Conate ships putting in to resupply. Nothing dramatic, but enough to interest the admiralty. Drink to the cock and magpie, cider and cave dury. The trees of the neath are scraggly and wretched, scrapping a living with parasynthesis. But the apples of Mutton Island are tart and powerful, perfect for cider. Cider? Cider! This stuff is stronger than it looks. You stretch out in your seat, stare through the leaded window at your safely moored ship, and find yourself whistling. The landlord gives you a friendly grin and goes back to wetting his cleaver. Let's go! Oh, oops. We have two fuel to get home. It'll be fine. This is nice, he says, as the room is on fire. This is nice. That's a monster. It's headed my way. Fucking full speed ahead. Sound the all clear. I have one fuel left. I have one fuel. Full power, beware, your engines will occasionally explode. I have never been to the surface, Brianna asks, or may have asked hours ago. Row of watchful Z bats hang from the cable. Returning to London. All the clatter and song of the dockside it soothes your soul. Are there messages for you? I have another day for evening. The Rose Market bustles on Roser's Wharf. Who will be there today? That's all for now. Oh, Rose Market. Something has changed in the Neath. Someone wants to sign on. Uh, that's where we'll call it for today, I think. Uh, I can never tell if it's saved or when it saves. 
let us uh, call it a day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's uh, great to uh, to uh, play the game with y'all. Uh, Penny has survived an hour on the sea. That's delightful. She wasn't murdered by anyone. She did some dangerous things, like going to Fathom King's Hold at all, ever. Uh, and we'll see how it works out. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody, if you enjoyed today's episode, or you would just like to see new things, uh, come visit our main website at www.crookedthimble.com. Uh, I should have the archive of this up there uh, sometime later today. And uh, also, please do remember to go and visit our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash crookedthimble. Uh, we are uh, adding some more content. We have a new post up on the Crooked Thimble page to talk about what it is that we're working on. Um, also, do keep in mind that our friends over at Ravensdale Publishing are just about to launch their uh, Kickstarter for Villains and Henchmen. Uh, and you should uh, check that out. Go to Ravensdale Publishing and uh, see what they're up to. They're publishing games and other things, and they're cool, good people. Um, I haven't been paid or nothing to say that. I just, I just like them. So uh, I think they, that good things should happen for them. Uh, anyway, uh, we will be back uh, at the same bat time on the same Z-Bat channel uh, at, uh, on Thursday. So I'll see you guys at Thursday at uh, 10 a.m. on uh, Pacific Standard Time. Cheers. <laughs>